สวัสดีค่ะยินดีต้อนรับเข้าสู่เซสชันพิเศษนะคะซึ่งจัดโดยบุลันทิรางวัลสมเด็จเจ้าฟ้ามหาจัก,กรีนะคะในวันนี้ในงานวันครูครั้งที่66ซึ่งทางครูสภาจัดนะคะร่วมกับภาคีเครือข่ายในวันนี้เซสชันนี้จะเป็นเซสชันพิเศษซึ่งทางบุลันทิรางวัลสมเด็จเจ้าฟ้ามหาจัก,กรีได้ร่วมจัดโดยการดึงหรือว่าเชิญคุณครูที่ได้รับรางวัลสมเด็จเจ้าฟ้ามหาจัก,กรีประจำปี2564นะคะมาสามคนด้วยกันมาเล่าให้ฟังว่าเส้นทางในการที่มาเป็นครูแล้วก็มาเป็นแรงใจให้กับนักเรียนและประสบผลสำเร็จในการที่เขามาได้รับรางวัลในวันนี้เนี่ยเขาทำอะไรยังไงมาบ้างวันนี้ก็จะมีสามท่านด้วยกันนะคะซึ่งทางมูลนิธิเนี่ยมีทั้งหมด11ท่านในปีนี้แต่ว่าเราเลือกมา3ท่านที่จะมาเป็นแรงใจให้กับคุณครูไทยของเรามาในวันนี้ก็จะมีคุณครูหาอันเฟืองนะคะจากเวียดนามนะคะคุณท่านที่1ท่านที่2ก็จะมีคุณครูนอร์ฮาวมีอับดุลมูตาลิบนะคะหรือว่าเรียกว่าคุณครูฮาวมีจากมาเลเซียซึ่งเป็นคุณครูสอนเกี่ยวกับทางด้านสเต็มศึกษานะคะแล้วก็ท่านที่สามก็จะเป็นมาจากบรูไนนะคะก็คือครูเป็นฮิรันฮัจีโมฮัมหมัดวาฮับเป็นฮิรันฮัจีอับดุลลาห์นะคะชื่อจะยาวมากแต่ว่าจะเรียกเขาสั้นๆว่าเป็นฮิรันวาฮับนะคะสามท่านนี้จะมาเล่าเส้นทางในการดําเนินชีวิตที่เป็นครูแล้วก็พอเขาเล่าจบนะคะตอนท้ายก็จะมีถามตอบนะคะซึ่งถ้าท่านใดสนใจที่จะถามคำถามคุณครูสามท่านนี้ก็สามารถที่จะพิมพ์ได้ไปในแชทบ็อกซ์หรือว่าคอมเมนต์ตามที่ช่องทางที่แต่ละท่านได้ดูนะคะ Good afternoon Welcome to the special sessions of the 66th Teachers Day of Thailand and this special session is called Inspiring Caring Connecting the Power of PMCA Recipient And this session is very special because we have invited three special guests who are the Princess Mahajat g r i Award recipient of 2021 to come and join us to share with us their story today. And their story is very remarkable. But before they're sharing their story, let me tell you a little bit about the Princess Mahajat g r i Award. The Princess Mahajat g r i Award is That was set up in 2015, and this award is given to the best teachers in Southeast Asia who change students' lives. And the award has given every other two years, starting in 2015, one teacher per country in Southeast Asia. So these special one select teacher for every two year are very remarkable. And a little bit later, you'll hear why they're remarkable. And the Princess Mahajagri Award, we have now um, 11 teachers every other year. So we have a total of 44 teachers from 11 Southeast Asian countries, ASEAN plus d e m o l e s t e And these teachers have been spreading out their energy and their remarkable activity to other students and other teachers in the region and beyond. So today with us, we have three distinguished teachers from Vietnam, from Malaysia, and from Brunei Darussalam. So we have with us Vietnam, Miss Ha An Phuong. Hi, Phuong. Xin chào. Xin chào. Xin chào. And the second speaker today, we have Mr. Halmi. From Malaysia. Hi. Hello. 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 Yes, yes. his tie is very good. So, <laughs> Thank so. you. Yes, we are very glad to have you, uh, Helmi. Thank you so much. Our third speaker today is um, Penghiran Wahab from Brunei Darussalam. Hi. 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 Yes, good to Hello. see you. So, what be car? So, um, I would like you all to share because we have with us today the audience from all over Thailand. They're listening in to your remarkable stories, and we want to hear the inspiration of you who have choose the profession to be a teacher, 
And not only that, you're doing what you do and with the very best. That's why you've been recognized as the Princess Mahatakri Award recipient of 2021. So let me first start with Phuong. So um, I would like to introduce Phuong by showing a video of Miss Phuong to see what is her story. And then after the video, she will tell you more about her journey to become one of the Princess Mahatakri Award recipient of 2021. Let's see her video, her story. When I was a little kid, my mom took me to the village to watch a movie named The Mountain of Score. The movie is about a teacher who goes beyond the role of a teacher, that I really want to become a teacher. I recognize education is the most powerful weapon to change the world here. And I teach English, and for me, teaching English, that means teaching a new world, it is a new culture. That's the reason why in my English lessons, I often implement many teaching methods to develop my students. I have conducted many projects um, with my students and we have achieved a lot of achievements. And I do love my jobs. I have learned with her since I was a little girl. At that time, she was teaching for free for the kids in the village. And then she made us change step by step by applying her teaching methods. We do love the activities of her English club and learning projects. For me, she's an influencer. I'm used to be a very shy girl, but when I met Mrs. Fruit, she changed me completely. I really enjoy her global connection lesson because I can practice with teachers and friends and so I become more and more confident and motivated to learn English. I'm so, so lucky to meet her and for me, she's like an inspirational message. Ladies and gentlemen, dear my colleagues, Firstly, I would like to say thank you for giving me such a great opportunity for sharing my stories and my experience on an interesting topic. My name is Ha Ing Phuong, a teacher of English language from Hung Kan High School, Phu Tho, Vietnam. And today I'm here to tell you two stories. The first story is from a movie to a career. So the story is about an ethnic minority girl in my village. When she was a little kid, her mother brought her to the village to watch a movie named The Marinette School. The movie is about a teacher who goes beyond the role of a teacher. And this movie really sparked in her an interest that she really wants to become a teacher. That is because she understands the difficulties of poorly educated people, especially women, who easily become the victims of many social evils or evil customs. From that moment, she's recognized education as is like the most powerful weapon for changing the world, like Nelson Mandela quotation. And uh, she studied so hard to become a teacher. After graduating from one of the top university in Hanoi capital city, Vietnam, she decided to further her master degree, then go back to from, uh, then went back home to teach ethnic minority students in her hometown, despite having been offered a high paid job in capital city. That time, her friends got shocked at her decision to go back to her hometown. And her school is located in a mountainous area where it's later there is later opportunity for students to improve English competencies and other connecting activities with outside world. She tries to find the best method to help students to connect with the outside world. By her teaching initiative, she can bring her classrooms to the world for a free approach. And uh, her students can connect with other classrooms to different 
classroom to collaborate in different projects and open their mind in intercultural awareness. Besides that, she has come up with so many initiatives like uh, teaching English word movie, rapping, and projects they learning and so on. And in 2020, 20 years later, she was recognized as one of the top 10 finalists for the Global Teacher Prize by Verki Foundation, UNESCO partner, and several national prizes. And in 2021, she was awarded the Princess Maha Chakri Award. And the People TV channel featured her for her devotion. And uh, the movie got the Golden Prize for the National Film Festival in 2020. So, you know, 20 years ago, she saw a movie about a teacher 20 years later, coming up is a movie about her and uh, the girl in the story is me. So the first message I would like to send you is the famous quotation of Nelson Mandela that, you know, education is really important. It is education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And uh, the second story I would like to tell you today is from Banana Field, I Can See the World. As you can see, I'm standing in front of my banana tree field. Three years ago, as it was noontime, while I was working with other global teachers coming from different countries, the power went away, so I could not continue working. I decided to go to my neighbor's house where the generator worked in this situation. And that time, my family did not have a generator. However, I did not want to disturb their napping time. Uh, reconsidering the problem, I decided to go to the banana garden in my house, um, uh, which is next to the house to catch the Wi-Fi for free so that I could work again. So that day was one of my first time joining to global teacher community and I gained a lot from them. And from the knowledge I learned that day, I applied to my classrooms and they really work for my class. And I can also bring my classroom to connect with the world and I treasure this session. And Literally, that day I was sitting in my banana tree garden and I could see the world. And my story has been internationally featured by many organizations. And the second message I would like to send to all of you today is that who dares to teach should never cease to learn as a famous saying, city or remote area is not barrier, teachers' unwillingness for professional development is a real barrier. That is the thing I really want to tell you today. And um, yeah, so Hung Kong High School, my school is located in the north of Vietnam, where most of students are ethnic minority, where economical and geographical reasons are the main challenges so that students have a little chance to practice English with foreigners low motivation and limited world outside knowledge, you know, yeah. So basically, I do believe that there are two main factors leading to a learner success, motivation and learning environment. So all of my teaching methods derive from these two factors, such as teaching English with movie, learning grammar by rapping, or like gamification, project-based learning, but because of time limitation, I would like to spend more time on board that classroom model as one of my teaching practice by giving, answering some W questions. What, how, why? Yeah, so uh, for the first question, what is the board classroom model? That is my own definition. So, um, it is an online approach that enables one classroom to connect with one or more than one classroom or school experts together to collaborate in different activities like as guest speaker projects, teaching, traditional teaching, cultural exchange, and so on. And uh, the second question, how to fight classrooms? Yeah, so you can easily find this kind of classroom from different uh, community like uh, Microsoft Education Community or Skype groups 
it's just not sky in classroom because it's closed now. Or you can go to the flipgrid.com and go to the grid pro function, then you can easily find these kind of classrooms. Or you can go to the Facebook um, with the name Skype in classroom. And, um, or uh, you can actively join in other communities for professional development. Like uh, when I joined in PMCA family, I can collaborate with so many teachers, amazing teacher in Asian um, areas. So I do love that. So the next question, what are activities in a border classroom model? So, you know, um, there are many activities that a teacher can conduct in a border lesson, such as traditional classroom, guest speakers, virtual chair project, cultural exchange, or live games. You can see some photos that uh, is uh, my lesson. So I do what the activities project-based learning. This is a project, Thailand, Vietnam, cooperation in education and youth sponsored by Royal Thai Embassy to Vietnam. Uh, in this project, we have connected with so many classrooms in Thailand that we can focus on the topic, raising students on cybersecurity. And um, we have learned a lot. And finally, the projects come up with the online chatbot for consulting students with uh, cybersecurity problems. And we've just finished um, a couple of days ago. Yeah, so um, as you know, uh, I do love the activities, virtual chips. You can see in this photo, um, my, uh, me and my students um, went to different places in my village, in my area. Then we have the virtual chip for students from all over the world. And we exchange cultural and my students do love it. So the next question, how much? The question is how much? And I'll talk about the effectiveness of borderless classroom model. As you can see, uh, in, 20, uh, in 2018, I conducted a research on measuring the effectiveness of borderless classroom model. And it reveals that it can switch from um, intrinsic motivation of students to intrinsic motivation and greatly enhance learners' intercultural awareness. Because of time limitation, I could not show you in detail, but if you want to know more about my research, I can show you uh, when you reach me via my email. So the next question, what are challenges? Well, we have met so many challenges that I can uh, sum up like um, several challenges like uh, time zone difference and uh, low English competence from learners, uh, like uh, some IT problems like internet uh, connection, uh, like uh, culture shock or cyberbullying. So what are the solutions and what did I do? Yeah, I think uh, I come with uh, I come up with several solutions. Like um, it's really it, it's re it requires both teachers and students to have a good preparation because teachers should come up with a clear outline. And sometimes I have to give all their thing what's check uh, what we should do the first step or the second step. Then my students will know it clearly. And um, um, secondly is really important to increase the input, like uh, the vocabulary, listening time, so that students can enhance the English language as well. And um, let's bear in mind culture shock prevention and cyberbullying are one uh, are the two main uh, challenges here. And it's really important for teachers to educate and give students more information about that. Uh, before conducting a board of classroom model. And um, for the time zone difference, um, teachers should consider it to choose the country and choose the kind of age um, classes in uh, the forum so that they can connect effectively. And finally, uh, it's better to uh, arrange the position of students in class. So normally I often arrange one of the uh, best students in the class with the low, um, low, um, English, uh, low English students in the same position so that they can exchange and they can have a kind of, uh, um, a kind of health themselves. 
so that uh, my class will go fluently. So because of time limitation, so uh, if you have any questions, you can send me the message uh, or by line or uh, my email, jenniferha311 at gmail.com. So um, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. Thank you for your listening. Well, thank you very much, Phuong. The stories of the girls 20 years afterwards, that's remarkable. It's very impressive and it's very touching stories. I can tell that this is a very um, new generation of teacher because you make use of IT and you make use of um, many interesting methods that you can bring in from your own experience to other students and they can learn from your experience. And I'm sure there's a lot more. And I'll come back to you on that because there's a lot of interesting point that I learned from you. But three interesting message that I got from your sessions is your, your story is that if you wanna teach your students, the first key message is motivation. Get them motivated and then they will enjoy learning. Make it, make it fun, right? So that was one point. The second point I learned from you is create an environment that enables them, make them want to learn. Make an environment, because I can see from your power, uh, your picture that you have many things, many uh, stories for them to be part of. So make the environment interesting. And the last point that I got from you, which I'm sure many of the teachers who listen in here today can make use of it, is that prepare. Good preparation helps a lot. So don't be afraid of any um, online, anything can happen like Murphy's Law, expect the unexpected. But if you prepare, things will go well if you prepare. So thank you very much for, for sharing your stories. And now we hear from Vietnam. So uh, all the audience here are the story of uh, this very young ethnic energetic lady from Vietnam. Now I will move you along from Vietnam to Malaysia. Uh, our next speaker today is equally have, he, he has also equally interesting stories of all these new generation of IT, but I'm not gonna tell you what his story is about. I'll let you uh, hear from him yourself. Um, the next speaker will be Mr. Halmi from Malaysia and he's a science or STEM teacher. And what is STEM? I'll let him tell the story, but I'd like to introduce him with a video presentation of Mr. Halmi. Cikgu Nur Helmi bin Abdul Muttalib dan saya merupakan guru mata pelajaran sains di SMK Jerlun Kedah. Sebenarnya pendekatan bila saya mengajar pelajar ni saya suka pelajar saya buat aktiviti hands on uh, sebab saya percaya kalau dengan buat aktiviti hands on ni uh, dia akan main hands on jugalah. Jadi saya sentiasa terapkan pembelajaran yang orang kata apa pelajar buat eksperimen, pelajar pergi buat eksplorasi dan juga uh, kadang-kadang kita orang pergi siap buat kajian lapangan. He comes with a complete package. He actually creates an opportunity of his student as well as to teach us at this school to explore. My students are always my biggest inspiration to become a good teacher. Bukan uh, sekadar mengajar di sekolah, malahan memberi uh, satu yang baru kepada masyarakat. Mudah-mudahan dengan adanya Cikgu Helmi yang banyak membantu ni, masyarakat akan uh, mendapat satu ilmu yang baru. But I do believe if a child is given equal opportunities, they also can excel and succeed in their life. I could see the little me inside each of them. And this makes me want to do more. PMCA is totally not about me and also myself, but a huge recognition for all Malaysian teachers. PMCA, thank you so much. So that was a very 
interesting and remarkable stories, um, Helmi. So the audience have known a little bit about you now. Now I'd like you to tell us more about your journey of becoming a teacher and why are you doing what you do, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Tinsiri, and also my fellow panelists for today. Uh, I'm also proud to be part of this forum, uh, you know, to get the opportunity to talk to Thailand teachers uh, in regarding of uh, Thailand Teachers Day. So I feel so proud about it. Uh, and, and at the same time, I, I wish that uh, all of you guys could learn something from my story, my experience, and um, Maybe we can collaborate after this, like uh, Miss Phone said just now. Okay, uh, because they already uh, seen my video, so I believe that uh, they got a, a little bit brief story about what I did in my classroom. But I want to start uh, my sharing for today with uh, the biggest inspiration why I become a teacher. So I start with my family background first uh, because I am a son to a farmer. Uh, I was born in Perlis, uh, border to Thailand. Uh, it's very near from Thai from Hanya and also Dano. Uh, Sadao, is it uh, in, in Thailand? Um, actually, both uh, my, my father is a farmer and also my mother is a housewife. So I come from a low income family background. And, you know, to struggle with needs uh, in my early childhood. So uh, I, I keep going on with what, what, what my parents uh, decide for me. So I'm so lucky because uh, my parents believe that education is the only way we could survive the challenges. So like uh, my father always said, um, you know, uh, if uh, uh, he is okay uh, if, if I'm a, a farmer too, but uh, he want me to get a better life. So uh, he knows that by you know getting a good education will bring me uh, thousands of possibilities so uh, in order to make sure that i got a good education so they put everything just to make sure that i got a chance to go to the school and get better education and luckily i i quite uh, excel in uh, my education i went to university and then i finished but after that i after graduated from university i believe that uh, it is my calling to give back uh, to the society. So it's just like my responsibility by setting a good example for you know people around me, people in my uh, in my place uh, that uh, everyone can succeed to, uh, even though they they come from low income family background or a son or daughter to a farmer. So as long as they can. Uh, do well in their education so uh, they can be excelled. So um, uh, because of that, uh, I choose to become a teacher uh, and then I got trained uh, for one year and then I got posted to a school uh, in the heart of Borneo in Sarawak. So if you know about uh, Malaysia, we, we consist of two part of, uh, part of uh, we have the peninsula and also the island, Borneo Island where we got Brunei also located uh, in the same place. Uh, so I got posted there for eight years and the kids there really, really uh, instead of I'm learning, instead, uh, I'm sorry, instead of they are learning from me, actually I am learning from them. So because I believe that uh, the real meaning of becoming a teacher is when you teach the students in the classroom. So every year is your, because I'm a science teacher, so I believe that every year your new student is your new experiment. <laughs> so you need to do, you know, you, you need to start from zero. You, you, you did everything uh, new, a new approach because uh, most of them, you know, they got slightly different from year to year. Uh, and the challenges getting, you know, getting quite challenging from year to year because we got a different generation. And um, uh uh, one of uh, my biggest event that uh, really changed me as a teacher, I believe that uh, when I met problematic students uh, on my very first day, I become a teacher uh, because uh, I, I believe that I'm uh, a good kid, a good student <laughs> during my school years. 
But uh, when you see a, a bunch of kids, you know, sleeping and also doing nothing in the classroom, so you feel that uh, is is this real? <laughs> is this a reality in education? So <clears throat> uh, the students behave uh, badly. They talk very loud. They, uh, and uh, they never feel uh, wanted to be in the classroom uh, because uh, I, I found out that they had no role model to follow uh, because. You know, they, they come from a family of uh, that they don't have any uh, uh, example uh, for them uh, to, uh, to go for. And um, and uh, at the end, um, uh, they are repeating the hard cycle of their life as their parents did. So I, I believe uh, this is where my lecturers, my Achan at university always said that uh, teachers are the agent of change. So if you don't interrupt their cycle of life, uh, you are going to let them, you know, just repeating the, the same cycle with their family, with, with their parents and also with their grandparents did. So uh, I think that's my duty and also my responsibility as a teacher uh, to go and interrupt the cycle of their life, you know, by giving them a good education, uh, take care of them, uh, giving love as a teacher and student so that uh, they can also empower their skills and also empower their uh, life as, as a learner. And, um, and um, I, I've, uh, I'm serving now at a, a school in Kedah, it's a rural school. Uh, and background of my student is also uh, almost same as mine, so I could easily uh, relate with them. So um, uh, if you are asking me about uh, what are my approaches for my students, uh, first of all, I found out that these students, are, they, are, they are not stupid. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> I, I believe that <laughs> our student is not stupid. They just, you know, don't have the motivation and also the right approach uh, for them to learn. So uh, 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 my first approach is to give them, uh, to empower them to decide what they want to learn. I mean, the way how they want to express their uh, learning and also what they want to express their product of learning. So I'm giving them 100% uh, of freedom to choose in the classroom. And uh, this found that, uh, I found that the students really enjoy it because uh, some of students before they used to follow what's being direct by the teacher. I mean that uh, you can do this, you can you cannot do that. So I'm, I try to change the culture, the education culture by giving them the opportunity to decide what they really want to learn, what they really want to deliver, what they really want to share with their friends. And um, uh, the second approach is by using project-based learning, like what uh, Ms. Fong shared uh, before. So I also believe that by doing project-based learning, it could uh, inculcate a lot of uh, good soft skills for the students, especially in facing 21st century learning, uh, that the students need uh, to integrate the knowledge and turn it into something that they can apply in their real life. And then they also need to have a good critical thinking uh, and then creativity to solve. Uh, and what's matter most is they are able to relate what they are learning in the classroom uh, to their surrounding, to their real world life uh, situation. And um, uh, in the video just now we saw, I also said about uh, hands-on activities. Uh, I, I, I insist more on hands-on activities by giving them a good experience so that uh, they can has, have minds on too. Uh, number third is about collaboration. I believe that is one of uh, the most important uh, skills that students need to know. Uh, I mean, students need to uh, empower uh, during this uh, era because uh, just like we are doing now uh, during this forum, so we are located in every uh, region every place uh, in Southeast Asia, but we still can get connected. So they need to, you know, to learn about how this skill is going to help them in the future. So they need to collaborate and also coordinate with other friends also. And the last thing is about uh, integrating technologies uh, or digital things uh, uh, in my STEM activities. Um, this had been uh, exposed by uh, Ms. Fong, uh, uh, so many so so many times uh, before this, but I also believe that uh, my students deserve to have uh, this type of tech knowledge uh, 
uh, digital knowledge so that this can prepare them for the future. And, uh, you know, blessing in disguise, what we could learn from this pandemic is that uh, uh, the pandemic already boosted uh, the digital knowledge uh, implementation in the classroom and in education. So I think that's it uh, for my sharing uh, of my, uh, what inspired me to become a teacher and also what's my approach uh, with my students. Thank you, Dr. Vincent. Thank you, Helmi. Your story is very inspiring because I can tell that it comes from the heart, um, like from the childhood, similar to Fuyang, the story of the little girl 20 years ago, same happened in Malaysia. The story of a boy, a, a, a son of a farmer who wants to help the community, who grow up to help the kids in the farmer farming community. So that is equally impressive. I, a many in, interesting point I learned from you, help me because you said you learn from your students. I learned a lot from you too. And with this session, I learned from Puyang and I'm sure I'll learn from uh, Penghir and Wahab later. Your point is interesting that it equals to Puyang's message, motivation, right? Because you said that if you want the children to learn, motivation is the key. And that's the same message that Fuyang said. And tell me your motivation is freedom. You let them choose 100% what they want to learn. And that's very good for, especially for STEM education. No wonder you have become um, a master teacher for STEM in Malaysia because of your teaching methods, you give them freedom and then they enjoy what they've learned. Um, so I also like another message of your about teacher is a change agent and you try to change the cycle of the poor in the family, in the community. That is something many teacher in Thailand also can relate to what you're trying to do. I'll come back to you on that because Two of you have interesting point that I want to uh, ask you more, eager to learn more about your journey. But before I ask you the, the questions that I wanted to know, I'd like to take the audience now from Malaysia to go to uh, Brunei, Jerusalem, to hear another interesting story from Benghiran Wahab, because his stories also comes from an angle of skills in life that children needs to learn. But what type of skills in life that children needs to learn? I'll let him do the talking himself. Uh, Benghiran Wahab from Brunei Darussalam. Uh, let me introduce you all to him with this video presentation. What I'm doing is uh, to build skill of the nation of the nation's youth. Uh, it's a personal, personal drive for me to uh, give back uh, to the nations through years of experience in the field of hospitality. Uh, seeing our students grow and being self-motivated within the programs, seeing the graduates uh, being skilled and employed in the industry or even being self-employed is a job satisfaction to me. Welcome, are we ready? I think um, Chigu Pengarin Wahab is a very kind teacher. He is patient, he's passionate for his work, and he did a lot of, he did most of the stuff for the school. Shigupen Moha was my ex-instructor when I was a student here in 1998. Uh, now, he was my colleague, so he's a down, down to earth man. Jarang kamlek yapumara, but a very low profile person. I think uh, of all the years I've known him, he is uh, such a very good character, uh, very committed. I mean, whenever you ask uh, help from him, he's just always willing to help out. One of the cha maybe one of the challenges is the communication, uh, language barrier, and different learning needs. Uh, we, we use bilingual to ensure that our students are able uh, to understand and apply their knowledge and skill. 
He gives a lot of good advice, motivation, life experiences, tips and tricks, whether it's outside of the school or inside of the school as well. Um, that's why we uh, thank him for everything that he has done for us while we are here. When I see the video, I want to go to your school and learn how to cook with you. You're welcome. <laughs> Looks so fun. Look at my student. Yes, I can be your students. So um, tell me, why you choose to be the um, culinary prof in this profession? Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to say, uh, take this opportunity first that convey essentially thank you to the committee for inviting me to become one of the speakers uh, for this uh, prestigious Thai 66 Teachers Day. And congratulations to all teachers in Thailand uh, for the Teachers Day celebration. Uh, happy Teachers Day. Just a little quote that, uh, that people normally say, being a teacher is just like a candle. Uh, you burn yourself to give life, to give light to other people. So, for us as teachers, we give life to the students. Right? Uh, we give uh, advices, motivations, and for the good and the future for the students. Okay, okay I was once a student of a culinary school in Brunei, the only culinary school in Brunei previous. It was uh, 20 years ago. Right? Now it's called, uh, known as Hospitality and Tourism School. Okay, after I graduated from uh, our technical school, I joined a few different hospitality industry. Right? Teacher is not my passion at that time. Okay, since I was raised uh, in a food uh, surrounding, my mother is a cook at a hostel uh, where this hostel occupied mostly uh, people, students from rural area. Okay, so every day my mother cook for them either for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Okay, uh, most of these uh, students, right? Well, I will say to my mother, "Thank you, Machi, or thank you, Auntie, for giving us food for today." Right? So how lucky we are to have you here, right? So every time when I saw my mother cook for the students for the hostels people. Okay, I feel that uh, something uh, bring it into me. So once I finished my academic, so I joined the technical school uh, in a culinary area. Uh, uh, it don't stop there. Uh, so when I finished my, I graduated from uh, my high school as well. Uh, when I joined uh, the industry, uh, still thinking I want to become a chef. I want to become a chef. Working, I have a lot of experience. I gain experience from every uh, few uh, catering industry, such as uh, from the fast food to the fine dining restaurant to the flight supervisor in making menu, and as well as uh, hoteliers. Uh, I become a, a hotel receptionist uh, just to gain my uh, hospitality uh, experience and uh, knowledge as well. So this means that I'm a hands-on person. Still, uh, I'm not, uh, my teaching is not my passion. Right? Until uh, I was visited by my uh, previous teachers, told me that, why don't you change career? Right? Come and join us and uh, we teach uh, our nation, we teach our youth eh? and help them to become people, someone like you eh? who has a success in the, uh, in the education and success in the uh, field of uh, interest. So I was thinking like, to myself, why not? Right? Uh, why not I pay back to the nation? Why not uh, I pay back to the community? And why not? Maybe one of the students next time will be my colleague or my friend's son, my friend's daughter. So why not giving them an uh, opportunity? So uh, 
that I start my teaching career. It took me almost two years uh, to change the environment from a hands-on uh, industry people uh, to a hands-on uh, teaching profession. Uh, for me, uh, teaching is a very challenging. Uh, <coughs> like Helmi said, uh, every year you will face different type of students that uh, with the same like me. Every year, uh, every year we have a uh, new uh, people, new intake, a uh, new student uh, with a different background, different uh, personality, different behavior and attitude as well. Uh, since uh, our schools, uh, my where I teach until now is uh, in a town area. Right? Most of the student is uh, from uh, the surrounding right in the town area not that most of the student uh, is come from a uh, uh, affordable uh, family that can afford uh, for education uh, but uh, most of these students are students who have a low academic right uh, they sometimes don't understand language they sometimes uh, very uh, low in interest, low in motivation. So some of peop some people said, whoever uh, enter the technical school, whoever enter the vocational school as people with failures, right? So most people think that, so we try, we try to uh, educate the community, the parents that this is not a failure area. This is not a failure. Uh, institutions, right? So we uh, we put a trust for the family to send the student to our school, teaching in technical and vocational, right? So as Chigwelme said, uh, the world changed very fast. Uh, when my teacher uh, told me when he was a student, uh, the teaching was quite in literal, right? But my opinion, our students is not only need teacher and peers, but they need active and experimental learning uh, to enforce uh, what they have learned. For me, it's quite easy. Uh, it's quite uh, what I said, uh, an easy task because I'm on. I'm from the industry itself, but facing different attitude, different background of student is quite difficult because whatever the fall that we do, the fall that we happen, all right, giving the student, they will complain it to their parents. Uh, there's uh, likewise, when I was in the industry, okay, I give command to the people, people will do it, whatever we give command people, but to the student is quite different. You have to be, uh, tender with them, all right? Uh, you have to be polite with them, okay? So, like I said, you learn from the student. Right? Student is my teacher, right? Student is my teacher. So, I learn from them as well. So, experience represents a uh, hands-on on experimental feedback of element. Uh, the feedback learn uh, very effectively, eh? uh, that you can do it uh, for your students. Uh, I want to increase uh, student learning effective motivation and passion to help them realize the relevance of what they learn in, for the real world and encourage them to use their skill to innovate and uh, benefit the society around them. Uh, so uh, we as a teacher, we as an educator play an important role uh, to uh, boost up the student into an energy that is from the motivation to energy, right? So uh, motivation is not itself is not enough if they don't have the energy. So when they have the energy, all right. Uh, so uh, the motivational will come along. So where is this energy come from? Right? So the energy come from the teachers, the educator, right? So when we teach the student in a correct way, correct method, correct philosophy, 
All right. Okay. Uh, it will give the student a good uh, feedback. Right? And then it will become a motivation to them. Uh, this uh, I've seen a lot of, of my former uh, teachers taught and leading, uh, leading us to become uh, someone who is useful to the country, someone who can pass through all the hard challenges and someone who respect by respected by others. Okay, that is most of the teacher, my teacher previously said to us. So I put back, I give back to the students that I under my uh, my class, right? So you have to be someone. You have to uh, be someone who is very strong. You can be someone who can uh, do all the challenge when whatever you can. But the thing is, you have to have your motivation and you have to have your energy. And so I can see potential in this catering industry having positive impact from the community. I like the community, like the parents uh, and uh, the surrounding. And then it serves an inspiration for me to build the skill of the nation youth. And in turn, they're able to give back to the nation through years of experience uh, being in the hospital industry. Students will listen to you when you talk to them sincerely, right? Not just like, hey, you, come here, do this, do this. No, uh, they will be, they will be uh, giving you uh, bad impressions, okay? They, will, they were there to develop their skill, enjoying inspiration, the young student coming to understand what it takes uh, to work in the industry and giving inspiration to give them a head start in their life journey to be uh, someone. One of my greatest moments uh, when uh, my few years of teaching is uh, when we give, uh, when I give the student, the group of students, a concept, a restaurant. I'm also teaching restaurant service. And one of these students is struggling with, uh, with uh, the restaurant concept. So I, I didn't give them any idea. I didn't give them any uh, sort of feedback. I just keep them and see them see and uh, just see what they do. And then these students keep up on pushing and pushing and pushing himself until it's clicked like a switch on, like a bob is switched, right? And then, and then after a few uh, things that, uh, what to do this, do that, do, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, he knew until he knew what to do. And what made even it better when he was going around the class, going around the class to other students to help the struggling student. And just like, it's just like a change of reactions. It's going from me uh, to students and to another student. Uh, it's a small picture of what uh, the potential I have uh, as an educator. So that's the, the one, one of my uh, greatest moments when I see students giving back to other students. Okay, uh, as an educator, we should not let the students sit inside the box. Uh, when they have the skill, give them the opportunity, opportunity to show off, to show off their skills and knowledge and maybe the work experience either by organizing competitions or volunteering to the community. Uh, I have I brought some of some students uh, for some uh, regional uh, competitions like ASEAN skill competition, what was held in Thailand, held in Philippines, held in uh, Indonesia and Malaysia as well. So uh, also bring students to world skills uh, world skills competitions, uh, world culinary competitions, national and international competition. Uh, some of the students managed to achieve a number of medals and excellence and also certificate. You see, achievement like this could not be done individually, right? The student could not done individually, okay? And uh, it's with the help of the teachers, but teachers cannot do this individual as individually as well without any cooperation from other teachers. Right? So uh, bouncing back from one to another. Right? Uh, 
there is come a teamwork. Uh, we always mention to students that if you want to have a good skill, you must have a good teamwork. Right? Uh, teaching the student teamwork, trust them, uh, give them trust to the peer will help boosting the confidence and the motivation. Okay, some some student is uh, kind of a layback student. Right? Uh, uh, it's your work. It's your work. It's not my work. So we try to about we we try to put the student into a teamwork, uh, which is beneficial when you go going uh, to the industry. So in the industry, you cannot work alone. You have to work in uh, in a team. Right? You need one and another. That is part of the skill we also give to the student, right? part of uh, communication and team building skill. As an educator, seeing our students grow and self-motivated in the program, seeing the graduate being skilled and employed in the industry itself, employed uh, or self-employed is a satisfaction for me. Uh, we have, I have a lot of, uh, a few students that uh, managed to open their own restaurant, right? uh, serving uh, good food, uh, giving a good service. Right? So it feel, uh, I'm very proud of it. Right? So every time uh, we pass through the, the, the restaurant, sir, come here, uh, come. Uh, I give you free food. <laughs> Come and try our food. So when it happened, and especially when you bring someone with you, okay, you will feel proud. Oh, this is my student. Oh, this is your restaurant. Uh, okay, so it's the student uh, giving back to the society. Uh, uh, the it 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 make me proud. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, what a teaching technique. Uh, come back to you on that. The the thing here will have. I'll come back on the your teaching technique later. Okay. Uh, because there are more story. Because I I can before we we forget the trends of the uh, message that I get from you, which link very much with Phuong and also uh, Helmi is you all mentioned about motivation. Yeah, and you you mentioned, and the nice part that you built onto what Helmi and Fung is energy. Not you said that motivation's good, but if you want student to learn, teacher is the one who bring the energy. And that is true. And I can see Helmi and Fung said yes. That's how how we bring the energy. Now let me ask Fung, and I'll I'll I can see the linkage there. Fung, when you you mentioned. Uh, I, I'm picking up on the idea of motivation and energy that you give to your students. A lot of barriers of linking border classroom. How do you use your teaching technique to energize them? How do you overcome the challenge? I can see a lot of things. Can you give me some examples? Thank you for your questions. That's a really good question because so many people ask me the same question and I'm happy to share with you. As I told you before, I have met so many challenges while uh, conducting the border like classroom model, like uh, time zone difference, uh, low English competence from learners and uh, like IT problems because my school is located in the mountainous area or the culture shock because we uh, live in Vietnam and when we connect with uh, some students in Malaysia, in Thailand and in some countries, we may meet this kind of problems and cyberbullying, uh, you know, cyberbullying is one of the crucial, crucial problems among um, the teenagers now, especially in the world of the COVID-19 pandemic and so many students have to learn online. So I, how I did with this, how I tackle, how I deal with this kind of challenges. So um, basically, yeah, the first thing I should do is become, yeah. So um, for the different times when I choose uh, a class that fits with a Vietnamese term or um, in the term of um, online connecting version, if we cannot have the kind of live connecting, we can find other platforms like um, 
um, the queasy Kahoot or kind of uh, um, flip grid so that students can exchange at the same time, but no need to have the face to face talking or some project like uh, we send um, the gift, the present to the other uh, schools in another country, then they send us back. So my student are really interested in this um, cultural exchange activities and gift exchange activities as well. And for the low English competence of students, it does seem to be one of the most difficult uh, task for any teachers. But I try to make it like, um, I, I try to arrange students to uh, have the good seats. For example, um, a good English, a, a good English um, students sit next to a poor English student so that they can support each other. So I don't need to go to um, every single place to help, but in the class, there must be a several students who are out smarter than other students. So I try to arrange this. And for the culture shock or the kind of um, cyberbullying, um, I did some projects that students themselves will try to understand um, the culture of other countries. When I try to connect with a new country, I will let my student uh, know some kind of culture shock first so that they can prevent it. And for cyberbullying, we did a very big project. It's an international project that has attracted um, different schools uh, and institutions from 21 countries in the world. So that uh, not only my students, but students in Thailand and students in Vietnam as well can raise the cyberbullying, um, uh, the, the cybersecurity awareness, I mean. And um, at the same time, uh, we, um, have invited so many famous IT uh, trainer or the IT specialist or the kind of uh, very um, KOL or influencer that can uh, interact with them and they really help us. Yeah. Well, next time you can invite Helmi to be the influencer for your students because <laughs> he's very good in social media and good with all the apps. Uh, on the internet, he used those. So help me, tell me, I know you use a lot of apps to teach your student science. Can you give us uh, some example? Yeah, uh, the Tutin Siri, uh, I'm really into social media because I believe that uh, it's a, a good platform of sharing knowledge uh, among the community and also to build a good rapport between teachers and also students. And uh, yes, I really active on blog uh, and also creating videos on YouTube. And now I'm moving my platform to TikTok because I believe that's Generation Z's uh, new platform. So instead of, you know, letting them uh, with, you know, some unsuitable content available on TikTok. So why don't we educators create a good uh, con uh, online content and then, you know, let, let them learn through, through the platform. Uh, yeah, so th yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Maybe we can go a little bit after this, Miss Paul. <laughs> yes, you can link on that. And I can think of the topic. I can think of uh, one of the dish which um, um, Wahab can pick up on that. Like we can do the cooking and then, but do the cooking through online, through social media. And Phuong can link the schools, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei. Now we yeah, have- Yeah, sure. <laughs> So, Peng Hiran, you, you mentioned earlier before I jumped to Fuyang was about your teaching technique. I like your point earlier that you, you look at children difference, not children, students different background. Yeah. Of course, in, in industry and in cooking, lots of background. How do you manage them and accommodate all the differences in your teaching, especially in skills like this? Okay, uh, we try not to make the student feel bad. We don't want the student to feel that they have been left out. We don't want to like discriminations. Right? So we just give, just give them advice. Right? Uh, what is good and what is bad. Right? We just, we also, I also give them example. 
uh, of uh, how how will, what will happen uh, if someone do this to your family okay. so in connecting to the class or in connecting to the industry uh, if you're focusing on uh, uh, being equal uh, being equal right uh, okay uh, you should give something that to make the students uh they are in one for example okay uh, one student is a web type of uh it can afford something one student uh is very poor all right so we get we go through in the middle so uh, what can uh, a rich people have that poor people also have okay that is family Right. Okay, rich people have family, poor people also have family. So we okay, uh, putting them together, putting them together, and uh, don't make them uh, uh, demotivated while we are giving them advice. Okay, uh, being a student with different background is quite difficult, it's quite challenging. Uh, we have to, like we said earlier, and also Helmi said earlier we learn from the student student is our teacher okay but don't make them a full time teachers right? otherwise we will go bad as well okay so when we learn something from a good student right okay we will uh, share this to other student when we teach bad student a uh, very aggressive student uh, very bad attitude student okay uh, we we do as uh was said make them a friend when we teach when we learn something from them okay so we give feedback to them okay all right this is wrong okay uh, uh as my experience as a teacher okay what you do is wrong it's not wrong for you but it's wrong for other people right so we like i said earlier we need to talk to the student uh, to the student in respect right? when we respect the student okay they will respect you right? so that's that's uh, the way we uh, share with the student different different student different background different attitude it's quite difficult but uh, you cannot say we have to learn from them so yeah. we learn from them we can uh, avoid things uh, and make them good yes i think you are, what you're saying is very useful for help me and also to film because they have to get students to work as a team yeah. right especially okay. online and your style of working in culinary in the kitchen like that you also need the student to work as a team yes so getting them to find a common ground something that they can share that's a perfect start to get them to work as a team in normal life and right. integrate and like i think right away on the of the borderless classroom of Phuong when Phuong try to connect students from many countries Classroom. yeah many classroom and many countries she has to find a common idea where students can exchange or even help me when you want to link signs to their students' daily life. I think something that very unique that the Thai teacher who are listening to you can use an example. I am interested, in, I, I like to ask help me when I mention about the science and community, it makes me think of science is not easy, help me. And uh, many students ad admit that, many teachers. Now, how do you link that to, to their way of life? And especially the experiment through online, how do you get them to interest or make them work together and link to help the community through science? 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Tensiri. Uh, it is quite an uh, uh, interesting statement when you say that uh, science is difficult, but uh, maybe for some science teacher, uh, we don't think that science is difficult, but interesting. I just want to say that it, it is interesting uh, subject. So, yes, but I, I do agree uh, when some most of my students say that science is quite challenging for them. Uh, one of a uh, tough subject for them in the, in the school. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, that's why I believe that uh, let's make it fun for them to learn. Let's make it fun. So things that uh, is not stated in the textbook, but uh, we can, you know, curate the experiment and then try to relate it with their uh, daily life is going to make them more uh, enthusiastic with the, with the subject. And um, Sometimes I'm uh, out of, you know, what uh, is written in the textbook because I need to work extra uh, from what my students have. Uh, I mean, I'm teaching in a rural area. They are not exposed to a lot of science knowledge compared to those who are live in the city. So uh, it is my responsibility. I always believe on that, uh, you know, to, to, to simplify it for them to make it easy, the, the easiest way or the simplest way for them to understand science. Oh, this is science because science is uh, the knowledge that happening uh, around them, uh, but they don't know how to, you know, explain it science. So it is my job. It is my job to make it, uh, to explain it the simplest way. Uh, so what you are doing now is, is science. What you are doing now is something related to technology. So that's why I try to change. Uh, uh, and then I have, a very good support from uh, my principal and also my colleague in school. So they keep encouraging me, you know, uh, to do uh, experiment that is uh, not in the textbook. So I always believe in, you know, exploring those things so that it could be uh, more fun to my students. And uh, as mentioned before, I also shared some of my best practices through my blog and also my social media, just to get uh, you know a good feedback from any other teachers on that activities. And um, I, 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 I still remember during the pandemic when you know everyone should lock down in their home, and uh, the only access that I could get with my students is through digital, through WhatsApp. Uh, and then I, uh, I try to make, uh, you know, I try to modify some of the experiments that they did in the laboratory, supposedly, but uh, I try to modify it and uh, I record it uh, in the TikTok platform and share it to them. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, um, uh, the TikTok, uh, I mean, the videos on the TikTok uh, is, you know, uh, getting viral uh, on TikTok platform. So it's not about uh, my students are learning about science, but, you know, uh, several of Malaysian people now also learn about uh, science in a simple and also in interesting way. So I believe uh, in this era, you know, we need to uh, do a lot of combination. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, to integrate creativity as a teacher and also to put, to integrate digital uh, technology, uh, how we can, you know, uh, optimize uh, the privilege that we have now uh, in terms of the technology and also in terms of uh, the creativity and also networking around uh, among teachers that we had. So, uh, because we are going to give good, more impact for more bigger audience uh, and, um, if, uh, if I can say that, uh, uh, if I can share something about uh, one of my challenges uh, teaching students in my school now is uh, because they come from uh, a farming community like what you said, uh, Dr. City, and then they have very low self-esteem. So uh, one, of the one of the way or the approach that I did with my student is by exposing them to uh, possible outside world. I mean, through competitions like what uh, Pengiran Wahab said uh, and also did with uh, his students uh, and also uh, expose them to the global global world like what uh, Ms. Fung uh, are doing with uh, her students now. Uh, and also at the same time, I always believe that because I said before that uh, my students, they don't have uh, any role models that they can follow. So instead of waiting other people 
why don't I become the real mo role model for them? So, uh, you know, they are very close with me. So why don't we, the teachers, become the role model for the students? So in terms of that, I also challenge myself to prove that uh, if I can do this, why, why don't them? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I try to push myself to the limit. Uh, I've been to, I apply for uh, international uh, teacher program in United States of America for one week. Uh, just to prove to my students that, you know, I come from the same family background like you you all, but uh, at the same time, I can prove that, uh, you know, by doing good planning and also by determination, uh, you have a clear objective on what you are doing. So you also can become extraordinary. Uh, I become the first Malaysian teacher to uh, being selected as um, participant for uh, European a nuclear center at Geneva, Switzerland uh, for two weeks. So I gain a lot of good experience. So uh, I keep uh, contacting with my students during that time to show them that if I can do this, if I can, you know, uh, get this, why don't you? you? You also have, you know, they have a close contact with me. They, they, they see me in real life, uh, you know. They, uh, so, yeah, that's one, one of my... Uh, one of my purpose to become a teacher, to become a good role model for my students. I believe Ms. Feng and also Pangeran Wahab also uh, are doing the same thing to their students. And um, uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, lack of facilities and everything uh, that, uh, we have a lot of problems actually in our classroom, in our school. But uh, I think it's our job as a teacher, as our responsibility to find the right solution to find the solution, not, not, it's not keep thinking on about uh, what the problem or the issue, but you know, keep uh, solving the problem. So we are looking for a solution instead of uh, the issue. So yeah, that's it <laughs> for my sharing. You're, you're speaking from the very uh, perspective of the science teacher, because you said looking for a solution, that is very science teacher. <laughs> and, and- Probably and, a hot TikToker. Yeah. Very hot TikToker, yeah. <laughs> She's also a TikToker. Yes, now I can see that we're ready pre to prepare for the project with with Helmi on yeah. the TikTok. You also use TikTok. So Phil, now that you show your uh, TikTok on the project, so when you do these activity with your students, with all the years, what are the most challenging experience you have? Um, yeah, for the uh, project-based learning, oh, we have met several... Uh, how do you solve the problem? How do you overcome it, the, that challenge? We can learn from you. Yeah, so we have met several challenges during um, uh, working as a project. But, um, you know, um, at, at the first start, uh, we have met several problems like a student lack of the uh, project skills doing project skills like um, not confident or uh, not well prepared or uh, they do not know what should be first, uh, what should do the second, what should do the next. But finally, I actually, I had to spend at least 12 days to teach them some kind of skills like uh, survey skills, what is the survey skills or um, like uh, asking question, what should we they ask or some kind of this or I have to train them the um, uh, information and technology apps. What app should they use? Like um, a kind of training efforts for them before doing project. That is my experience before. Oh. Uh, yeah. So uh, a teacher hired me. I already followed your TikTok. You're wow. a very hot TikToker. <laughs> oh, great. Really oh. hot TikToker here. Oh. I, don't have web. I don't have TikTok apps. <laughs> Are you are you TikToking um, when you're at Wahab? No. <laughs> you should you should create one. You should create yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. I already have, but I I am not um as famous as uh, teacher Jaime. I'm not as famous as teacher Jaime. He is super famous on his TikTok account here. Okay, I will check it out after this. Yeah, yeah sure. You, you need to do that. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So your your experience, Fuyang will be is um, very useful for the teacher who wants to do online activity with their students, particularly want to do a project-based learning. 
we keep teacher, we keep saying, oh, do project-based 21st century skills, but we never teach our students like what you mentioned. So that's a good lesson learned. Teach them how to do survey, teach them what are the apps available, give them basic background information before you jumped into the project. Otherwise the project will not work if they don't have background information. So that's a good fruit for thoughts for us. So now let me go to uh, Benghir and Wahab. We hear a lot of the IT um, young generation teacher. Let's Benghiran, he's an industrial and hands-on uh, person and very calm and cool. Give us a very good philosophy on how to get the student to work. What are the most challenging experience you uh, face when you do all these teaching with your students? Okay, uh, of course, like uh, Helmi said, a challenge is the, uh, the communications. Uh, as our uh, teaching, at uh, first, I know, uh, teaching uh, application is English. So student needs to know how to speak English. So that's our main, uh, one of our uh, challenge is about the communications. Uh, but uh, how we overcome this challenge, we play in two roles. One, uh, we... Uh, one to one, uh, one to one, you know, uh, one to one uh, uh, teaching, uh, and also the other one is, uh, I say, uh, by language, uh, by language, dual, dual, uh, dual language. So uh, we have to speak half Malay uh, to make them understand uh, what it is mean. Uh, when you said it in English. So some students are very uh, high IQ. Some students are very uh, English speakers. Uh, some students don't know about any basic uh, English uh, because uh, if they left the academic, uh, most of their English is, uh, they fail their English. So, so one, that is uh, one of the challenge in, uh, in my area. Right? Because uh, to deliver, for example, uh, if you go for European food, all is this in English. The method is English, the recipe is English, the ingredient is English. So even what is buffalo? Students sometimes don't understand what is buffalo. Uh, so we have, to, uh, we have to tell them what is buffalo. Uh, is buffalo uh, uh, is... Uh, family to cow, but uh, it's a uh, it's different uh, different uh, body body like like uh, in Malaysia it's called seladang, in Brunei it's called karabau, uh, so I don't know what it's called in uh, in, in Thailand. <laughs> okay, so some students don't even knew uh, what is uh, carrot, uh, so this is the language barrier that we need to. Uh, overcome uh, when this, we have students like this. Yeah. Okay, uh, we, all, we bring students to uh, all, we don't give students local item because local item is very common and easy for them to understand. Uh, give them to uh, international food. Uh, we go to European food, we give them uh, Thai food, even Thai food. What is Basel? They don't know what is Basel. So we give them international food. Uh, we away from our uh, local. So, but in terms of project, uh, uh, they always choose a local because it's very easy for them to understand in terms of uh, preparing a local food. Uh, uh, and also... Well, the, you know, can, I, can I link your interesting point on that to firm? Because... Okay. Your, your point on communication and on language barriers. Very interesting that you teach culinary, but the environment and the situation is very similar to Phuong because when you when Phuong link borderless classroom, Phuong yeah. also try to help students to communicate across the country and also language barrier. So when you have the language problems, 
some of the student doesn't speak English. How do you overcome that? I'll see whether your technique similar to Bengir and Waha. Yeah, I understand what you mean. So basically, as uh, along with the um, uh, arranging the seats of students in the class, uh, I encourage my students to use some kind of translating app that they can self-study, that they can deal with the uh, difficulties when they try to express because they have a time to prepare at home. And normally after a borderless classroom lesson, uh, my students and uh, um, other students uh, from other teacher, like a teacher Hami or teacher uh, Wahab, uh, they can um, exchange themselves, no need me to interact with them. And they can send a message via Facebook, uh, send a message via uh, Instagram or TikTok, something like that. So they will uh, study uh, themselves, self-study without my help. By um, I encourage them to use some apps. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So language barrier use the apps, translation apps. So um, I'm sure Benjir and Wahab will now uh, have their students search the internet while they do the cooking to know with all of those as well. That will be useful. We need a lot of apps in the uh, practical class. Yes, there you go. Yes, yes. During the class, uh, practical class, but during the theory class, yes. During the theory class, yes. So looks like all of you expose your students to um, opportunity to hands-on experience. So we have last the last five minutes here. So uh, if we since we have the audience of the Thai teachers and it's we're celebrating the 66th uh, Thailand Teachers Day, uh, what would be your message to the Thai teacher to inspire them? Uh, to care for their students so that their students be the best they can be. Uh, start with Phuong, if you have one minute to uh, send the message to the Thai teacher on the World Teachers Day. So I would like uh, to send my message, who dare to teach should never cease to learn. That's very powerful, Phuong, very powerful. Okay, so uh, help me. Uh, I just want to say that uh, always believe, have believe, uh, have faith uh, in our students' ability uh, to learn, to do anything uh, in the classroom. Uh, and also don't forget also to guide them because uh, our students always need our guidance. So I always uh, believe in these two things. So believe in your students and also guide your students. So happy Teacher's Day. Great. Thank you, Helmi. Uh, thank you, Ran Wahab. Your wise word. I love your wise words. All right. For teachers uh, in Thailand, please don't underestimate the power of touch, the power of smile, kind words, listening ears, and honest compliment. Uh, all of this can turn things around. Uh, it's for the benefit of our students. Great. Thank you very much. You are very inspiring, all of you the words that you give to the Thai teacher are very sharp and right there where they need it. I'm sure they will learn a lot from three of you and you all share the common heart, motivate, give them opportunity. And I like to wrap it up by using Benghiran Wahab's word that teacher is like a candle. You burn yourself, you light the way for your students to move along. So light the way. I hope three of you will continue your journey by lighting the way to not only your students, but to other teachers in the region and in Southeast Asia. So thank you very much again. On behalf of the Princess Mahachakri Award Foundation, uh, who have uh, worked with the Teacher Council of Thailand, organized these special sessions. We like to thank three of you who share with us your wonderful and remarkable story. You are the true teachers of Southeast Asia. Thank you very much. And Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
ทุกท่านได้ฟังจบลงไปนะคะเป็นภาคภาษาอังกฤษนะคะจากที่คุณครูทั้งสามท่านได้เล่าถึงเส้นทางการดําเนินชีวิตมาเป็นครูแล้วก็พวกเราได้แรงบันดาลใจอะไรมากมายทีเดียวนะคะคุณครูสามคนเนี่ยมีพลังมากๆเลยดิฉันเองฟังก็ได้พลังจากคุณครูทั้งสามท่านอย่างเต็มที่เลยแล้วก็ได้เรียนรู้อะไรมากมายนะคะท่านแรกเนี่ยก็คือครูเปืองครูเวียดนามจะเห็นว่าคุณครูเป็นครูยุคใหม่มีพลังมากเลยนะคะสมกับตัวธีมของงานวันครูครั้งที่66ในวันนี้เลยเนี่ยครูเฟืองเนี่ยบอกว่าวิธีที่จะเทคนิคในการที่จะดึงดูดให้นักเรียนทํากิจกรรมซึ่งครูทํากิจกรรมเกี่ยวกับห้องเรียนไร้พรมแดงเนี่ยนะคะครูบอกว่าต้องสร้างกําลังใจให้กับเด็ก motivation ครูบอกแล้วก็นอกจากนั้นเนี่ยในการนอกจากมี motivation หรือว่าสร้างกระตุ้นให้เกิดความสนใจแล้วเนี่ยก็จะต้องสร้างสภาพแวดล้อมที่เด็กสนใจในการเรียนด้วยนะคะแล้วที่สําคัญที่คําที่ดิฉันประทับใจของครูเฟืองมากก็คือบอกว่าการให้เด็กเรียนภาษาอังกฤษเนี่ยมันเหมือนเป็นการเปิดโลกให้กับเด็กเขาเปิดชีวิตใหม่ให้กับเด็กนะคะฉะนั้นคุณครูท่านใดจะเอาแนวคิดของคุณครูเฟืองนี่เอาไปใช้ว่าการที่เปิดโลกให้กับเด็กโดยการเรียนภาษาอังกฤษหรือว่ากิจกรรมต่างๆผ่านทางออนไลน์มันเป็นการสร้างวัฒนธรรมแล้วก็สร้างชีวิตใหม่ให้เขาด้วยนะคะนั่นคือแนวคิดอันหนึ่งที่ได้จากคุณครูเฟืองในกิจกรรมหลายๆอย่างที่ได้เล่ามาตอนต้นขอบครูท่านที่สองนะคะครูเฮลมี่ที่มาจากมาเลเซียซึ่งเป็นคุณครูสอนทางด้านวิทยาศาสตร์แล้วก็ครูสอนทางด้านสเตปศึกษานะคะก็มีแนวคิดที่น่าสนใจอีกเช่นกันข้อคิดที่ดิฉันได้จากคุณครูเฮลมี่เนี่ยครูเฮลมี่บอกว่าครูเนี่ยเรียนไปกับนักเรียนเลยนะคะเป็นแนวแนวที่น่าสนใจสําหรับครูวิทยาศาสตร์ที่บอกว่านอกจากเรียนไปกับนักเรียนแล้วเนี่ยครูเปลี่ยนเทคนิคการสอนทุกเทอมเพราะว่าเด็กที่มาใหม่แต่ละเทอมเนี่ยมีอะไรแตกต่างครูก็ต้องปรับกระบวนท่าในการสอนการที่คุณครูปรับก็ทําให้ครูเนี่ยเรียนรู้ไปเพิ่มเติมทุกๆุกเทอมเลยด้วยอันนั้นก็คือเป็นเทคนิคที่น่าสนใจแล้วที่ดิฉันชอบของครูเฮลมี่ครูมาเลเซียครูบอกว่าสอนแบบเปิดอิสระเลยคือให้เด็กเป็นคนเลือกว่าอยากจะเรียนอะไรนะคะอันนี้น่าสนใจดีทําให้เด็กรักเรียนวิทยาศาสตร์มากยิ่งขึ้นนะคะนี่คือเทคนิคการสอนของคุณครูจากมาเลเซียส่วนท่านที่สามคือคุณครูเป็นฮิรันวาฮับจากบรูไนนะคะอันนี้ท่านนี้เป็นนักปรัชญาตัวตัวโยงทีเดียวเพราะคําพูดท่านลึกซึ้งมากขึ้นมาท่านบอกเลยว่าคุณครูเปรียบเหมือนแสงเทียนที่เป็นเทียนที่เผาไหม้ตัวเองเพื่อที่จะให้เด็กเนี่ยส่องครูเผาไหม้ตัวเองเพราะว่าให้ส่องสว่างให้กับเด็กให้เด็กได้เรียนรู้ให้เด็กมีชีวิตในการที่จะก้าวต่อไปเป็นคนข้างหน้าโอ้โหเป็นพลังมากเลยนะคะคือครูเนี่ยยอมเสียสละให้เห็นว่ายอมสละให้กับเด็กได้เรียนและอันหนึ่งที่ครูเป็นฮิรันบอกเนี่ยนะคะเป็นฮิรันวาฮับบอกว่าถึงแม้จะให้กระตุ้นให้เกิดสนใจแล้วก็ยังไม่พอจะต้องสร้างพลังให้กับเด็กด้วยเด็กจะได้เรียนเพราะครูเป็นฮิรันเนี่ยสอนสายอาชีพสอนอาชีวะจะหายากนะคะที่จะมีคุณครูเป็นตัวอย่างเกี่ยวกับสายอาชีวะที่มองให้เห็นความแตกต่างของเด็กครูเป็นฮิรันก็บอกเทคนิคเหมือนกันว่าเวลาจะสอนเด็กเนี่ยต้องมองให้เห็นความแตกต่างของเด็กด้วยและเข้าถึงโดยการสื่อสารให้เข้าถึงกับเขาพูดกับเขาแบบใจเย็นๆพูดกับเขาแล้วก็ให้เขาได้เรียนรู้ทำงานร่วมกันเพราะในชีวิตจริงเนี่ยครูเป็นยีรันบอกว่าเด็กจะต้องทํางานร่วมกับคนอื่นถ้าไปทํางานจริงฉะนั้นถ้าสอนเขาตั้งแต่วันนี้ทําให้เขาได้มีทักษะตรงนี้นะคะก็อันเป็นพลังอันหนึ่งที่แล้วคุณครูก็บอกว่าครูเนี่ยเป็นส่วนช่วยในการเปลี่ยนชีวิตของเด็กซึ่งเข้ากับในแนวทางของรางวัลสมเด็จเจ้าฟ้ามหาจักรีเลยนะคะว่าคุณครูคือผู้ที่เปลี่ยนชีวิตเสร็จชีวิตของสิทธิ์นะคะแล้วก็คุณครูสามท่านเนี่ยก็สรุปให้เราเห็นตรงกันสามอย่างเลยก็คือทุกคนสอนทักษะชีวิตให้กับเด็กเป็นพลังในการทักษะชีวิตคือให้โอกาสอันที่หนึ่งให้โอกาสในการเปิดโลกกระทัดให้กับเด็กไม่ว่าเฟืองจะเปิดให้เด็กมีเรียนไร้พรมแดนครูเป็นฮิรันก็เปิดอาชีพให้กับเด็กครูเฮลมี่ก็พยายามจะดึงวิทยาศาสตร์เข้าสู่ชุมชนสร้างอาชีพให้กับเด็ก
communication ซึ่งครูสามท่านเนี่ยพูดมาชัดเลยว่าถ้าจะให้เด็กรักเรียนถ้าจะสอนให้ประสบความสำเร็จต้องสื่อสารให้กับเด็กสื่อสารแบบเข้าถึงนะคะแล้วก็เข้าใจเขาด้วยอันนี้คือข้อคิดที่เรียนได้เล็กๆน้อยๆจากคุณครูสามท่านแล้วก็หวังว่าทุกๆท,ท่านที่มาฟังในวันนี้ก็จะได้ข้อคิดไม่มากก็น้อยจากพลังของครูสามท่านในเซสชันพิเศษซึ่งจัดโดยมูลนิธิรางวัลสมเด็จเจ้าฟ้ามหาจัตุรีในวันนี้นะคะขอขอบคุณมากค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ